Hello everyone, my name is Mega Mace, and I am late publishing this, but hear me out, I have a good reason. I just got married. I'll have photos for you guys soon, but I'm currently waiting for the photographer to send them to me at this point, so... Until then, you'll just have to deal with me telling you stories about some entitled parents that may be a little dated. Our first story is about an entitled mother who blames our OP for her kids' vaping issues at school, a mother who tries to injure our OP's leg, and lastly, a bratty child who tries to steal someone else's bike. Each story may sound a little different as I'm trying new mic positions again, and I can already hear it, Oh god, he's trying new mic positions again, kill him. It's okay. I'll get this shit eventually. With that out of the way, let's begin. This story is called, EM Blames Me For Her Child Getting Caught Vaping, by Generic Teenage Name. Backstory. Everyone knows the vaping problem. I am not advocating for that. Please, save your lungs. But it's a big problem at my school. One day, I got called down to the office. That is when it happens. P is principal. P.O. is police officer. You know the others. Me. What is this about? P.O. E.K. was caught with a jewel and some jewel pods in his backpack during the lockdown. We had a lockdown a few hours before for a drug bust. And he says that you planted him to get him in trouble. E.M. That hooligan framed my baby. He would never do anything like that. Me. Are you serious? I have never had a history of this. And why would I do that? What do I have to gain? P. Can P.O. check your bag? Me. Sure, go right ahead. They searched and obviously found nothing. E.K. Check his locker. He said he keeps his stuff there. P. Come on, O.P. We're gonna go check your locker. We go and they find nothing. Duh. And then... E.M. That devil child is hiding it somewhere! Strip search him. Now both of you, strip. P. No, we have searched his bag and his locker. He is innocent. Now, your child not only brought vaping stuff to school, but he lied to school officials and police officers. E.K. I'm not lying. He planted it. He is lying. Me. Dude, just give up. E.M. Don't talk to my son like that. I want him expelled! P.O. Ma'am, that won't happen. P. O.P., go back to class. Sorry to bother you. Me. Okay, no problem at all. Have a nice day. You too, officer. E.M. proceeds to grab my hoodie and pull me back, but the P.O. keeps her back. They tell me to go, and E.K. tries the same, and this time, the principal holds him back. I leave, and he... Thanks for all the comments, guys. Got expelled. Short and sweet, thanks for reading. Yeah, jewels and other vaping things were only starting to be a thing when I graduated, so there wasn't any real ruling on them in my school. I don't personally use them, but to each their own. Just remember, folks, if you want to frame someone to get them expelled, it is best practice to hide all of the evidence on the person and not keep it on yours. Unless you're Rick and Morty, and you can hide it way up there. Let's put them way up inside there, as far as they can fit. Oh jeez, Rick! Alrighty, our next story is called, Entitled Mother Tries to Make Me Stand on a Bus in Crutches. And to protect the innocent, as they requested me not to show their name, I will be replacing the corner image with images from r slash iBleach. Enjoy. I'm on mobile, so sorry for any format issues. This one is also pretty dialogue heavy. When I was a freshman in high school, I dislocated my kneecap. Normally, this kind of injury heals up really fast, but for some reason, in all the three times I've done it, it has taken me months to heal. About three weeks after I injured my knee, I was taking the public bus to school. I sat in the very front reserved for the disabled and elderly people. Now, at the time, I had just taken off my leg immobilizer and was waiting for a knee brace to be ordered, so I had no brace on my knee and I couldn't bend it at all. The only way that you can tell I was injured was the fact that one knee was twice the size of the other, and I had crutches next to me. Enter Entitled Parent, we'll call her EM. EM storms onto the bus dragging her poor kid behind her, a 4-5 to five year old boy who was fairly quiet during the incident. After she paid her fare, she sped down the aisle and kicked my extended leg, remember I can't bend it. 
I cried out in pain and clutched my knee, and she scoffed. No apology or anything, just scoffed. Okay, fine. I just tell her not to worry about it, and she walks away further down the bus looking for a seat. She juts her head around like a chicken, searching for a seat on this already full bus, and lets out a long, exasperated huff before turning around to look at me, in the single empty seat beside me. EM approaches and asks, Can my son sit beside you? I nod my head and gesture for him to sit down. After he sits down, the entitlement begins. EM So, are you gonna get up? I asked if my son can sit in that seat. Obviously, I need to sit next to him. He's too young to be alone. Me. I'm sorry, but I can't really move. There's no more open seats, and I'm not really in the condition to stand. I point towards my crutches. But there's a standing bar right next to him that you can use. EM. Don't lie. I hit your leg earlier, and you said not to worry about it. Can't you just stand instead? I'm not stupid. I know those crutches are only up here for emergencies. They're not yours. You're just sitting up here sticking your leg out into the aisle to act injured. Go stand like everyone else your age. I swear, you teens are so entitled. Me. Look, you can ask the bus driver whether or not I came on this bus with crutches. My leg is out in the aisle because I can't bend it. I have spent the last few weeks in my leg immobilizer. Can you just leave me alone? EM. Okay, fine. But what happened to your leg anyway? It doesn't look injured at all. Me. I dislocated my knee. EM's face goes red, and she grabs my injured leg and tries to forcibly bend it. She realizes she can't because my joints are locked and pulls the stop wire. I scream out in pain and the bus driver stops and walks over to where I'm sitting. He says that he's heard everything, but minded his own business because he didn't think that she would get physical. When the bus driver, BD, Adamishes, Adamishes? Excuse me? Admonish. Admonishes EM's behavior, she turns into a sputtering mess. I wasn't part of this particular conversation because I was too busy ugly crying. BD. What the hell do you think you're doing assaulting a crippled child? EM. I thought she was lying! I've seen people dislocate their knee before! Her story didn't add up! It doesn't take that long to heal! BD. So instead of calling her out, you decided to try to force her leg to bend? It's not up to you to decide if she's lying or not. Get the f*** off my bus! EM. But I had to take my son to daycare! You can't just kick us off! We have places to be! BD. Okay, if you don't get off my bus right now, the only place you'll be going is a jail cell! The EM's eyes went wide and she grabbed her kid, dragging him off with her out of the back exit. BD apologizes for not stepping in sooner and tries to calm me down. Through my tears, I told him not to worry and just start the bus again. The pain eventually subsided, but I spent the rest of the day icing my knee in the nurse's office. I never got an apology or a name, but I wish I could go back and press charges. People are seriously crazy sometimes. Edit for clarity. This happened seven years ago, so I doubt the bus company has any video surveillance still around. I never got her name either. Since then, I've dislocated my kneecap twice, every two years since the first time. Currently, I'm doing fine and being very careful trying to build muscle so it doesn't happen again. I'll post an update if I end up dislocating one again in 2020. Also, she couldn't bend my knee. She kept trying to force it, but a locked joint is a locked joint. It wasn't budging, and I was too busy crying in pain to fight her off or beat her with my crutches. And that, my dear viewers, is how she lost on a medical license. Bad medic impersonations aside, I'm sure your leg will do fine, you'll get back into soccer, you'll get to enjoy yourself, and you can collapse to the ground and fake a knee injury with the best of them as you have had real knee damage as reference. This story is called, Kid Finds a Bike in My Backyard. Mom Goes Berserk When I Take It Back, by Puff Man Now Yeah. Note, one, I'm on mobile. Two, 
not native English. Thanks for three silver and gold. FAQ. I'm the father, as in male. We had potatoes with peas and corn with sausage for dinner. Yes, I'm a male that knows how to cook. The bike will never be left unattended outside. Yes, I have a sturdy lock. I located and took a picture of the serial number. Backstory. I am a single parent. I have a beautiful girl that's turning 5 in August. The past year I have been fighting with my ex that tried to keep my kid away from me. Lawyers aren't cheap, and being single doesn't exactly help with my finances. A couple of months ago, I won the lawsuit, and I finally got to have my kid at my home again. For the past few weeks, she has been saying she wanted a bicycle, but still recovering from the lawsuit bills, I wasn't able to afford it. Past week, I got my summer bonus, which finally gave me the financial boost I needed. So yesterday, I was finally able to buy my little girl her bike she wanted so badly. I enjoyed my time with her riding our bikes, but then it came to getting time for dinner, which I still had to make. So we headed back home and parked our bikes in the backyard. We go inside and start making dinner. After about 10 minutes, I spot movement in the corner of my eye through the kitchen window that was on the side of the house. I see this kid, guessing 7 or 8 years old, just casually strolling by with the brand new bike I just got today. My heart dropped, and I ran to the front of the house hoping I'd catch him before he rides away. I was lucky I did. I yanked the bike out of his hands and freaked out on him, saying it was mine and he had no right to just walk into other people's backyards to take things. I was boo. I forced him to get the fuck off my property and set the bike inside of my front hallway, thinking it's over. Boy was I wrong. After confronting my little girl that never saw me get this mad, poor thing, I return to the kitchen and continue making dinner. Fifteen minutes later, doorbell rings. It's the kid and his evil mother. EM You give my boy this bike back! He found it! It's his! Me. He found it in my backyard. I got it for my kid today. You should try to teach your kid some manners, and he shouldn't trespass on other people's property to take things. EM Don't tell me how to raise my kid! Give me the bike back or I'm calling the police! Me. <laughs> Call the police. And I slammed the door in her face. By this point, my four-year-old is crying her eyes out, and I get to comfort her again as she's thinking she's losing her brand new bike. Her sobbing finally over, I try continuing to make dinner yet again. Preparation's done, I'm about to put it all on the stove, doorbell. I flip out, I storm to the door, violently open it getting ready to just explode into this <laughs> face. Guess what? She actually called the cops. I instantly calm down when I see it's the police and I invite one of the two officers inside while the other stays with the evil woman. I explain the situation and show him the box the bike came in, along with the receipt that has my name on it. He shrugs and apologizes for the inconvenience, assured me that I won't be bothered again. I let him out and close the door with a smug smile on my face. I check the front window to see what's happening, and I see her go into the full tantrum. It ends with her into handcuffs and on the back seat of the patrol car. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Don't know what happened to her, and I don't care. I finally finished dinner, and my kid still has her bike. That's all that matters to me. Boy, what a day. Man, that is a very interesting philosophy. You know, I found it, so I keep it. I'm just going to take this sledgehammer, bash in an ATM, take all the money. And the police can't do anything about it. I found it in the ATM. It's okay. It's mine. And that's when I get like 10 to 20 years in the clink. Cue my harmonica solo. Thank you to our posters for letting me share your stories. Links down below in the description. Seriously, I'll figure this stuff out eventually so I can get these out more often. I'm nearly at a point where I can work on these daily and I'll try to post like twice a week. And I know you're probably thinking, He's just lazy and only wants to post like once or twice a week. And you'd be right. 
I'm trying to break my lazy habit so I can try to entertain you more often. I like doing this stuff, but it's not really something I can do to sustain myself. It's just not possible. Until then, I'll do what I can to make you guys laugh. If you enjoyed the content, please leave me a like and comment below. If you are new and you like what you saw, please subscribe to keep up on what I'm doing. I'm trying to get my Twitter into a somewhat presentable condition, but it's going to take time. Other than that, thank you for supporting me, and I wish you a wonderful day.